Welcome to another part of Blood Rain. This time, we're doing Blood Rain 2. So, Blood Rain 2 is uh, the sequel. It is an improvement over the first game. At the same time, it's kind of a downgrade. You'll see why. Some things it has improved, some things it hasn't. One of the things it has improved is the control scheme, the default one, is much better than beforehand. I don't change anything because I like how this actually controls, so that's the good news. The bad news is the story. If you thought Blood Rain 1 started you off in a confusing spot... <laughs> I hope you're ready for the starting cutscene of Blood Rain 2, which we're going to see right now. You ready? You've been quiet tonight. <clears throat> yeah, you shouldn't worry. You've got me here to help. I'm not worried, Severin. And I don't need your help. Or the Brimstone Societies. Well, good thing I'm fun to have around then. Yes, it's a very good thing. I expect a number of horrible deaths tonight. Uh-huh. I'm guessing that dress will cause a few of them. Zerensky's really outdone himself tonight, eh? Man, oh man, I've got to come to Zerensky's more often. I told him to sell early, but you know Tom. Amazing. My god, look at that. Good night, nurse. Oh, that's definitely stimulating my economy. <laughs> Jesus, Bill sees her and I'll be on my back for the rest of the weekend. Okay, mics are working fine. I'm gonna check out the upper floors. Uh, pardon me, Mayor Governor. I'll return in just one Yes, <laughs> yes. It's very clever. You look thirsty, Chief. Why don't you hail a passing scotch? Hello. Welcome. A Daryl Zerinsky. And I, uh, <clears throat> do mean welcome. It kills me to ask, darling, but have we met? <laughs> darling, I'm sure you'd remember. But you have no drink. Heads will roll! I've brought up a case of lovely Merlot for this evening. Please, but something stronger. I never drink wine. Meet me at the stairs, will you? If you can tear yourself away, darling. Nice turn out. City council, captains of industry, high rollers, mob bosses. Everyone's here but the crown heads of Europe. They're shooting up in the bathroom with a couple of sultans. You find anything? Mm-hmm. Nose around a bit upstairs. Looks like our host Zerinsky, darling, is a member of your extended family. A brother, likely. Half brother. Like I'm half vampire. Never forget that. Yeah, well, that's still all bad news for him. There's one room in particular upstairs. Locked tight. Very high security. You didn't break in. You're interrupting. A lot of Zerinsky's staff are wearing a sigil. The vampire overlord Kagan may be long dead, but his cult is still at large. Like Brimstone suspected. And that makes Zerinsky their grand wizard. Sick bastard. Whatever's behind that door upstairs is probably very educational. And this might be fun after all. I'll take a look. You have something for me? Hello, angels. I missed you. Not your style, Ray, but you'll want to be a little cautious, okay? Oh, that's real nice. Both hands on the stairwell, please. And thus we begin. So, first of all, uh, the first problem is the camera. It has that little bit of like a slotting movement, which doesn't look that good for a PC game. Uh, but that's a minor complaint. Right now, the combat is actually an upgrade. We'll see that pretty soon. But first... Another improvement will be the tutorial, which act is actually much more helpful and useful here. It tells you everything you need to know that's actually important, like the kick here. Areas off limits to guests, lady. I'm no guest, pal. So yeah, the fighting. 
God. It's both an improvement and a problem. It's an improvement because it actually flows a bit better. It actually feels nice. It doesn't feel like a complete weirdness. And, you know, the gibbing and the blood is so extreme, but it's fun. And, you know, the feasting is honestly good, too. It's still a little abusable, but not as much as it was beforehand because the initial problem now is the AI. The AI is much more smart and difficult than they were beforehand, so... It's less possible for me to fuck around, and they're gonna screw me up real bad. Not only that, but our health is actually a bit more lower now, compared to leveling 1, so damage is going to be a lot more common. Another problem is the lock-on system here. Holding the control button to do this. Now, in one way, this is actually useful for the gun thing, and, you know, for targeting certain enemies, and how the fuck did that work? Uh, the, but the problem is, it was already auto-targeting beforehand pretty fine, and for the most part, going around without having to lock on on one enemy was actually working pretty well. And not only that, but this also locks certain abilities. You need to lock on in order to do certain things, which makes it a lot more clunky in a way because of how, how, what you have to do. For instance, this ability about to get right over here. Not supposed to be in here, lady. Shut the f- May I escort you back to the party, ma'am? So, the harpoon. Back in Blood Rain 1, the way this worked is that you would just throw your harpoon. It would go anywhere you want. Uh, it would always usually auto-lock onto an enemy. And it would bring them closer to you so you can feast on them. That's not how this works here. It's now a Spider-Man move of flinging them around, trying to get them into spots where you get unique deaths, like that right there. The problem here is obviously you can't use this to feast anymore. It's very clunky and that slows you down and keeps you in one spot a lot of the time. The lock-on is awkward, so it makes using the harpoon awkward as well. And it kind of doesn't work that well. And not only that, but much like feeding, Harpoon on the ground doesn't really work. Now, unlike feeding, you can actually fucking harpoon enemies on the ground. It's just the likelihood of it actually doing any of this shit is low because it just doesn't want to work that well. Another problem is that the game is much more linear now in that it locks you in the areas until you go through some fighting. So, waves of enemies have to be fought in order to make any kind of progress. Now, in one way that can be good, but in this regard, it honestly pads the game out, uh, cause... They throw enemies one at a time kinda slowly, and... It just becomes a bit of a bore trying to get through every enemy when the game is just like, slowly trotting them to you. And, uh, yeah, it, it just, it takes forever for me to actually get an enemy, like, right there. And the AI can sometimes get stuck at times, so, it's not perfect. And it is clunky as shit, and it makes things slow and awkward. You know what else is awkward? You can't get guns. Nope, there's no guns in this game, really. The gun system is gone, for the most part. It is here, you do use a gun. It's just, you don't use a gun in that you grab them from the enemies and use their guns against them. You don't even get guns at all for the starting bit, so forget about all that shit. You can't be here, lady. Oh man, look at the blade, she's damp here. Damp here go down just like anybody else. Oh, not just like anybody else. Wanna try me? And yeah, the slow-mo thing. We have all of our modes immediately, so that's good. And does tell you about all the modes, luckily. However, there is one new move that is, Ooh, this is quite more bedroom, broken than the feasting. Choice, huh? The fatalities. 
All you have to do is just press the E button to feast on them, get your health back that way, and then press the F button. Not only does it kill them immediately, like, no matter how much health they have, but it also attacks any enemies close. Like so. Where's my backup? See? Now, of course, you know, the whole biting thing makes fatalities a bit awkward, but as you can see, it makes things fun, and it makes things like kind of more broken crash. than they were in Blood Rain 1. The only saving grace that the AI does more damage and isn't to be fucked with. So, it's not that easy. And yeah, we now have Phantom Doors. <laughs> Hell of an operation you've got here, Zerensky. Cult of Kagan's gone multinational, huh? Now I know exactly who I'm up against. Wow, I haven't seen one of you guys for decades. Where have you been hiding yourselves? Oh, the old tongue still? I never learned it. Seemed kind of highfalutin. And our first boss fight. Did you even see that I mean, it's a, it's a mini boss fight, but it's still a boss fight. It's a Dampir. Now... This is the first time we even really got our Dampiers in here, except for Rain. I mean, Mitch's the Dampier, but... Yeah, we got this guy, and he wants to kill us. I don't know why. I don't know why there's a specific tongue for that shit as well. And we killed him already. Watch. Alright, thanks for the lesson, bitch. Oh yeah, the uh, special moves. Uh, I don't know if I'll really use them. I probably will for the boss fights, if anything. But for the most part, they're awkward. Much like most of the game. <laughs> uh, it's still kind of awkward to play. And hey, we're gonna save now. Uh-huh. Thought I might find you here. Even dead, you're a thorn in my side. You've been gone a long time, Kagan. I've been taking care of your family for you, though. One at a time, all across the world for 70 years. I think I'm nearly done. What do you think of me now, father? We thought we were strong enough to take him. But we couldn't even hold him. Kagan, where is he now? Li library. I'm going to destroy you. Oh, one of mine, aren't you? But you smell tainted. Which one was your mother? Never mind, I'm terrible with names, but I trust she died painfully, like the rest of her family. You Nazi asshole! You're gonna- Nazi, hardly. I'm breeding an army of my own. That idiot Hitler is simply teaching me to lead one. Not that he knows that. Ah, yes. The Vesper of the Shah. Exactly what I was looking for. Now, you're going to destroy me. I'll provide an audience. Sir Tremaine? Oh, so you two know each other. Ah, I see. Yet another you stole from me, Professor. Raise it as your own, did you? Taught it to kill its own kind. After all the trouble I took to create it. And all the other mongrels just like it. Rain, get away! Run! Put him down, you lying rat-sucking son of a bitch! Liar? 
indefinitely. But so is he. Didn't you tell it what you intended to do? This, Professor. You kill your filthy half-breed pets. Yes, Professor. Destroy all vampires. I think most definitely not. Kagan's sick dream of a fully bred vampire army died with him that day. And because he murdered my mother's family, I've spent the last six decades finding and eliminating his. Just returning the favor. How about some music? The master, I mean, Mr. Zorinsky, would prefer that all the guests remain downstairs, madam. The master can blow me, monkey suit. Wait a minute. Nice. I will say the dialogue for Rain and such is better, no way. and master there's a lot more character and personality no and, you know, better quality in that shit compared to the first game. Ha! Also, some of that shit there, like the, uh, the fireplace... Ah! <laughs> The harpoon is going to be used quite a bit, not because I want to use it, but because I have to. In order to make progress, there going to be points where we have to use the harpoon to throw enemies into areas. And one of those areas is that fireplace there. I have to throw enemies into the fireplace a few times, which will eventually cause an event to play. <coughs> Damn it. Well, that sounded expensive. Sure did. Think I can expense it to Brimstone? Uh, let's wait till we see the final bill for this evening. I'll keep my receipts. If we are to make progress in this game, we have to get these events, so... Yeah. There's also, you know, the... It says circle, you know, the fucking zero, but it's actually the circle button. And yeah, like, there you go. And oh, I keep saying the circle button because I'm so used to controllers. But yeah, it's not the zero key that you're seeing there, it's the O key. They could have made the font a bit better for that little bit there. But, um, yeah, you can see objectives right there, at least. You can know what you have to do. It's not that useful, because the game tells you what to do anyway, so I won't really see that screen ever again at this point. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, uh, for the most part, all we have to do is just continue on forward, going through a very linear path every time, and, uh, essentially just do what the game tells me to do, which is either fighting a bunch of enemies, or using the harpoon to throw enemies around, or, as we'll get into, platforming. You guys have got to keep the yeah, together. platforming. I mean, we didn't do that much platforming in the first game, but it existed, you know, the tightrope stuff and all. Um, I feel like... The developers of this game were thinking that Rain can fit in as a Laura Croft in how she should control. Also, to disarm enemies, it's the kicking. It works, but it's awkward. Like and if you don't use the F key to knock the weapons out of them and try to feast on them, they damage you. So, you know, that can kind of get in the way. But yeah, they tried to make uh, Rain much like a Laura Croft in how she controls and her, uh, you know, acrobatic skills and all. But, um, I'm saying this right now, at the bottom of my heart, Rain is not a Laura Croft, and quite honestly, she never will be. Just reached a courtyard outside the study. I was there earlier. Have you been practicing your acrobatics? I guess. Just one more thing I'm naturally good at. I say that because the pole vaulting shit here is the most jank fucking part of the game. I'm sure there's a way to turn around while you're spinning, much like Laura Croft can, but it doesn't work well. I feel like I only get it to work once. And not only that, but the platform itself around these parts is uh, kind of awkward. And sometimes... The fucking movement glitches, where you can be standing in one spot, like Paul Bonson in one way or whatever, and then the game just jump cuts you to somewhere else. And it just fucks you that way. It can be that kind of jank. 
And also, you know, there's the whole being on a pole thing. There's now, like, sliding on poles and all. There's a lot of things that this game has, and it doesn't work well. And pole vaulting is the most awkward part. Like, there you go. That was the moment where it actually worked while I'm spinning to actually do the thing. After that, it never works ever again. Maybe on console of the controller, but no. Also, to press the S button and then jump to jump out of a pole, um, uh, that's, that's awkward. I mean, I could just jump out because I'm already not moving, but it's not how it works here because we keep standing on it. Look, Jack and Daxter also had some jank fucking, uh, you know, movement control as well. Rain is worse, and I don't like it. I don't like doing this acrobatic shit with rain. It doesn't control that well. It doesn't function that well. And it honestly makes the gameplay worse. Because every time I usually want to get to somewhere and have it work, the game will glitch out so much of it. It just cannot handle the acrobatic shit. And... Yeah, it's a downgrade there. Anyway, next level. Rain, where are you? It looks like I'm on the roof of the mansion. There's a lot of Zerinsky's men on patrol. I'd stay off the lower roof if I were you. Then I gotta find some way across without going down there. Yeah, I'm guessing if we fall down to the ground, it's an instant game over. So we have to stay up on these rooftops. I mean, we will have to actually, you know, deal with the ground floor eventually, but right now, it's just top floor for this one. By the way, when it comes to the acts of this game, remember that there were three acts, right? You know, those acts one, act two, and then act three. This game has seven. It doesn't say they're acts, but they are levels in that they are definitely a bunch of areas all put together and there are seven of them I'm going to do you the favor and I'm going to do you the nice favor of having this part be two acts alright so this level this act this area here of the mansion the party and such and the next act we'll be doing are only in one part and that's fine because Act 2 is the shortest one in the game. Like we've got a party crash so... Oh yeah, the, the wall jumping. Sometimes it works. Sometimes the game doesn't want to connect me to the fucking wall. Sometimes the wall jumping doesn't want to work. Again, the acrobatics in this game just... They're awkward as fuck here, and I don't like it. Again, some things this game works with, some things this game definitely doesn't. And it really shows on this very first act. Because it is showing pretty much everything that the game's going to give you. And by the way, when we get for this door, we're going to get our guns now. Oh, no way. They're real? What you got? Something interesting. My god, Severin. Zerensky's got the Carpathian dragons. I, I thought they were just legend. Well, that's what Brimstone thought as well. <coughs> Rain! Rain, are you there? What happened? Oh, oh I'm fine. It's just they're so... beautiful. And extremely dangerous. Listen, if they're the real Carpathian dragons, they feed from the blood of their Dampier host. That's you in this case. They alchemically process the raw material into vampire lethal projectiles. You're gonna have to feed to fill the reservoirs. You can still use them when their reservoirs are empty, but they'll draw blood directly from you. And I do mean guns in the plural sense that we do get a dual wielding gun. And that dual wielder is this blood gun. 
You only get 40 ammo with it to start off with, and to get more, you use the feed option, and then you press the shoot button in order to use people's blood in order to reload the weapon. If you keep shooting when the number is gone, however, it will use your own health. You obviously don't want that. Here's my problem. The gun is weak. The shooting is weird. The added uh, disadvantage of it using my actual health bar sucks. And the variety of having different types of gun like shotguns and rifles and RPGs like panzers and shit, all these advantages and different kinds of weaponry are gone. We only have, essentially, a pistol. A dual-building pistol. Like a Lara Croft. But not as fun. And it's limited. Lara Croft's fucking pistols are usually unlimited. And yeah, there's that bit there. I was just aiming to the right, and I didn't press anything except the jump button. And the game automatically decided to swap me to the other side for no fucking reason and maybe jump at the wall. That is going to happen way too many times for me. That That's why I have such a bad look with the acrobatics of this game. Because it doesn't work right. And yeah, the fucking gun thing. I would love to just grab other enemies' ammo, like other guns, and stock them up. And just use them, the heavy guns and all, and having specials and grenades and shit like I used to. But I don't have that anymore, and I didn't mind that feature. I mean, yeah, it wasn't the greatest, but it worked, and it was actually kind of neat, and, you know, it added a lot to the game and its content. But now that we only have this blood gun thing, which does have an upgrade system, by the way, it's slow, but... Oh, yeah. Mr. British. Who the fuck is this guy? I, I've been trying to keep quiet about that, but who the fuck is this British prick? We never gotten him at all in Blood Rain 1. He was never mentioned. He's just here now. We just have to... <coughs> I get that we don't have mints. Keep the sheep together. But... Miss like a fucking friend and a trainer, essentially. And from what I've been told, Rain is a lot more experienced and better now, and she definitely has a lot more emotion. So why the fuck do we need a British guy? Like, to be, let's espionage motherfucker, why can't she just have Dark Man still? In fact, what happened to Dark Man? Where the fuck is Dark Man? Like, and what happened to the whole mission at the end of Blood Rain 1 of going against the fucking dad. Apparently he's dead now, so that was just fucking skipped. And what the fuck was up with that fucking professor guy, the scientist guy and everything? Like, what the fuck was going on there? Nothing's still being explained, and I have more questions than I did Blood Rain 1. What the fuck? I think Zerensky just blew his membership at the country club. Behaving badly? It's how he was raised. See for yourself. I believe it's time to do what you do. I'll do what I do and meet you later. Who are you? Oh, come on, Z. I'm the black sheep. The one nobody talks about. I'm on a world tour visiting every bastard child of Kagan I can find. Ah, so you're the mysterious assassin. Well, you've certainly been on a spree, haven't you? We weren't even sure you were real until poor Delinda showed up without her head. The one in the West Indies with the snakes? She gave me your name. Didn't want to, though. Very loyal. Hardly. None of them are. Hmm, you've intrigued me, but I fear I must attend to other events. So I bid you good night, little sister. Please, make yourself at home. 
All right, playtime's over. A night to remember for all times. A prelude to the longest night. It's time to fly, my children. The family awaits our coming! You're right about one thing. It's definitely time for you to go. But you're my guest. It would be unforgivable to leave you this way. Oh, of course we have a brother, apparently. And of course he's our first boss. And of course we don't know that much about him. When the fuck do we know anything about any goddamn character so far? <laughs> Jesus Christ. So yeah, this guy. His main annoyance is the bats. Every time he has the bats come out to play, they knock us down and they fuck us up a little bit. Now... You can avoid the knockdown by getting some Blood Rage, but I was in the, in the mindset that the Blood Rage would go down incrementally over time. I was like the first game. No. It's different here. Now, the way this works is that it only goes down every time you attack an enemy or you take damage. It doesn't really go down at all when you're just using it. So I can keep it on the entire time, and that blue bar will not go down, really. But if I attack an enemy, or if I get shot, then yeah, I get hurt. But yeah, th th Jesus Christ, like there's so many fucking questions. Why do we have a brother? Why is the brother alive? Why can he turn the bats? Why are the bats bullshit? Oh yeah! The that. fucking bats! Which do I shoot? Use your to spot him in the crowd. Yeah! Fire. Yeah, I have to use the aura vision to get him. But... The lock-on thing doesn't really work here with the fucking bats. It works with the enemies, not the fucking bats. And... Because of that, I have to just blindly shoot and hope it connects. And usually it doesn't. But not only that... I have to keep doing this, where I have to keep going to an enemy, and I have to keep fucking buying them, and refill an ammo by using the fucking mouse button on them, to fill it up, and every time, it's usually only up to 10, maybe 15 of blood every time. So in order to refill it back to 40 or close to it, I have to at least get two guys in order to make this happen. And that is if I can avoid killing them. And, you know, I could use this fucking Blood Orphan to do damage, but so far it does nothing. I can't fucking melee him. I have to shoot at him. And it's just like... Looks like we only one out of, like, 20 bullets that are gonna hit this guy. And, yeah, he's not that, he's not that you know, strong. You can see that that one shot dealt a good bit of damage to him. A few shots will kill him. But it's hitting him that's the problem, and it's why this boss fight takes so long, because I can't hit him. Where's my backup? You need to, to be honest though, the fucking bats in Blood Rain 1 were a pain in the ass to even hit at all. So, I feel like it hasn't changed here, and the fact they're making this a main thing is just... It's just bad, and the bats, man! The fucking bats! Here's the thing. The final boss of Blood Rain 1, I hate and think is a bad boss, because it's just utterly bullshit. The hit spot is not noticeable. The hit spot is a fucking massive pain in the ass, and is almost luck-based to hit at times. The amount of weapons and ammo you have to get that fucking hit is very low, in a sense. You have the second boss, Wolf, who is an absolute prick to fucking get through, because you need to keep him alive in order to get more fucking guns and ammo to take care of the liar. 
But at the same time, Wolf continuously fucks you up more than Blyre does and makes life a living hell for you. You know, it takes you a few tries deliberately in order to actually beat the motherfucker. It really is, in a sense, mostly luck based. But that was that problem. This problem is that it is almost entirely luck based to even hit the fucker. His hit spot is very noticeable and it should be very easy to hit. But the aiming of the gun and his erratic movement make it fucking as bad as Belier's hit points. And the worst part is the gun. I never really complained about the guns that much. I complained about the damage output. I complained about how useless a lot of the fucking RPGs and shit were, and the pistols. But I never complained it didn't work. I never complained that it didn't fucking work, that they were useless. They weren't useless. The guns in Blood Rain 1 were integral to me. They were very important. And the specials and the shotguns and machine guns were all extremely useful. The fact that they got rid of that for what amounts to a dual pistol where the aiming is awkward and jank as fuck and it uses up not only its own blood supply that requires me to refill from enemies but also my own fucking blood, my own health It is much worse than the first game. I don't care how cool the gun looks. I don't care it's an upgrade system. It takes forever to even upgrade the fucker. And I don't care if it has different modes. Which we'll see when we get to that. I really don't fucking care. Because at the end of the day, it uses up my health. It doesn't do that much damage. It's my only gun option. And ultimately, it makes the gun combat worse than the first game by a wide fucking margin. If they ever, ever somehow make a Blood Rain free, I hope to literal God they just bring back the old weapon system of the first game and don't do this one. This does not work. It really does not. It's awkward. It's worse for use than the fucking normal gun shit. It's worse for use than just feeding and fatalities and the fucking blades now. And I'm being forced to use it for this boss when I really, really don't want to. I am heavily discouraged to even touch the fucking guns now. But I have to. Because I can't beat this fucker without it. So yeah. In the first boss, we have literally gotten most of the main complaints I have about this game. I did say that this game did things right, and it did. But I also said it did things wrong, and FUCK ME did it do things wrong. This is only the first act, and I'm infuriated. And how much this annoys the fuck out of me and downgrades the quality of the game compared to the first game. It's shocking. But I beat the boss anyway. And he really is one of the most annoying bosses in this game. So at the very least, it's over now. And I can move on being more positive. Seriously, fuck this boss. Surprise, dude. Oh, yeah. 
you. You have anything to do with all this noise? Actually, the whole place was wired to go up. Guess in case something terrible happened to Zrinsky. Like, you managed to hold on to that list. You bet. It's what I was hoping to find. A twisted family tree. It lists the whereabouts of the entire Kagan cult. And it looks like they're all converging right here. In the city. I called this in. Brimstone's put their top minds on it. They're none too pleased. I am. They've all come here. Me. I'm ending them, finally. And my father's sick bloodline will be extinguished. Zerx. Hmm? Zerinsky's dead. His party was a success. With its leaders dead, the city is left wide open. Ah, he fulfilled his purpose then. No greater aspiration in the natural order. And how did our erstwhile brother perish? Not clear yet. There may be an interloper. I'm investigating. Hmm. I've been working on something that will interest you. No, no. Smells like slurs. Indeed, she's his mother in loose terminology. Our grand dam of the sewer still has purpose. Observe him, bursting with thick, rich blood. You can feed from anywhere. <laughs> Who could have imagined a manufactured, controllable food source to ensure against the coming long winter? Mm. And fathers what humans could never be made useful. Dead God, Xerx, it's horrible! Uh, yes, we're also working on the taste. We'll get there. <laughs> While Mayor Randolph's highly criticized Clean Sweep for Clean Streets initiative appears to be gaining ground in the inner city, prostitution and drug activity have sharply declined. Shelters and missions have reported a drastic drop in homeless and truant. Come on, Piggy! All over it! <laughs> While tensions continue to rise over the city's disappearance of several of the city's prominent citizens, investigations continue, but neither the mayor nor police chief Brewster could be found to comment. This is connected, right? The wholesale slaughter at Zerensky's and the drop-off in street trash? Brimstone thinks so. Disappearances have skyrocketed. It's like all the junkies, hookers, and homeless fell into a hole in the ground. That, or a big goddamn vampire convention pulled into town. Maybe. We're lucky to have you back for this one, Rain. Yeah, well, my interests in Brimstone Society still manage to overlap from time to time. The master list you found at Zerinsky's details the Kagan cult's hierarchy. The top positions are all his offspring, and there's a lot of them. I, got, I gotta go. Stay in touch, don't disappear. Severin! Oh, hell. Right. Damn it, Severin, I'm trapped in this dive. So here we go, find some goons. We're now in Act 2, and Act 2 is much better than Act 1. It's actually more fun. At the same time, it's much more harder, which is fine. But, first of all, we have to get through another obnoxious harpooning part. Aw, oh, didn't they tell you? District's closed, honey. Adult swim. Everybody out of the pool! Jesus, trapped in a burning honky tonk in the jukebox is downstairs. Somebody's gonna suffer for this. There's a fan here. We have to destroy the fan by harpooning enemies into it to destroy it. Like so. Now, the actual number of times you have to do this isn't the bad part, it's the harpoon itself. It really is a downgrade to me because just the movement of it is weird. If you move front and back, it's basically the same thing. It's very powerful. It flies them. But if you're throwing them sideways, for some reason, Rain can't throw these guys sideways sometimes, unless diagonal. 
because every time I try to throw sideways, it's just a lip. And it's really awkward, and it's really bad, and I'm not a fan of it. But there you go. Now we can move on from here and get to the good stuff. Very creative, Rain. Yeah, well, I try. We're picking up heavy activity over at an old meat packing plant called Ray Ray's Meats. Sounds delicious. Just get over there and see what you can find out. Another puzzle we can get this game is that it has some area things to it, like some area damage. And not just explosives. That was a given. I mean shit you can actually shoot at and destroy, which causes events to happen that kill enemies if you do it right. And this right here is one of them. That I find to be cool. Using the environment against the enemies. That I like. And for the most part with Act 2, it really showcases that to a great degree on using the environment to your advantage. And I like that. I like that it's using the level as a means to actually fight. It's not just your abilities, it's the entire level itself that can be useful. And not only that, but a lot of the unique kills in this game are honestly really nice. They don't really cut the flow of the game much, and they're entertaining to watch. They're actually really nice, and I enjoy them. Again, I wish things with the harpoon and the fucking guns were better. But for what we got, for what we have here, with the normal combat with the knives, with sometimes the harpooning, with how the game works on normal fighting and the kick system and everything like that, it's better, and I like it. Also, I like this little bit right here I'm about to do right here when I get some more of the ammo for the gun. See, shit like this is fun. I really liked that. And I'm glad there's a lot of that. I'm glad there's a lot of like unique little cutscenes for doing specific deaths. I'm not going to get all of them, obviously. But for what I do get... I actually have a lot of fun with, and I enjoy a lot. Hell, even the ability of destroying these little banisters here and whatever, uh, to, you know, make shit fall, like back in the fucking, uh, Hedrox fight, it's here as well, and it's a normal thing for not only getting through the level, but also to kill a whole bunch of enemies. And, again, I like that. Like, look at that! That was fucking cool! That was honestly really nice. And then we start getting throwables that we can't use, but they can. And then we start getting the jank fucking pole vaulting shit again. While we're being attacked. Now, you can shoot at them while you're doing this. But it's not that useful. It took quite a few shots to kill, and quite frankly... It's more waste of time than anything. I'm better off just getting close to them and either feasting or taking them with my knives and using the gun. In fact, that's the fucking mood I get from the end of all of this. I am better off using the feast, the kick, and the knives more than the guns. That wasn't really the case of the first game for me, because I would usually use the guns well as the knives pretty much the same, as well as abusing the feast option. But, here, the guns are universally worse than before, and I'm just really discouraged from using them ever. So it's like, it's just really fucking sad to see this. Looks like an entrance to Ray Ray's Meats. There's a truckload of idiots screwing around with an old garbage truck crusher. It looks like it's blocking the entrance. Well, you're going to have to find a way to get past it. Also, you can supposedly attack with your swords while you're on the rail, but... As you can see, I'm trying, and it's not working. I don't know why it's not working. I don't know why I can't swing while I'm pressing the button. Because that's all it tells me to do. Do I press direction while I'm fucking pressing, holding the attack button? I tried that too, and it didn't work, so I, I don't know. I don't know what it wants from me. But guess what? It's another harpoon bit! So, yeah. 
You see that garbage truck right there? We have to harpoon him into there. It's not a destruction thing where just touching it will let us advance. It's the thing where they have to actually enter the fucking garbage truck. Now, I could use this as an advantage to upgrade the gun. Because I can see from that yellow bar of the circle, it is going every time I shoot them. So it's obvious the leveling system in this game. But... I don't like using the gun. I don't like the fact it uses my blood. I don't like trying to refill it in order to, you know, use the enemies to refill it in order to use it again. And refilling your gun, which will automatically kill an enemy, does not actually add to the leveling up system. So it's like... At least the explosions and the events are cool. And yeah, like, he's taught us to be careful and shit. He really cares about us. Again, who the fuck is this guy? But, let's just ignore the British guy for now and move on because there's a whole bunch of other characters that I have to complain about on what the fuck's going on. Well, that's a wash. Looks like I missed all the action. No way. They couldn't have gotten up that fast. Rain, I think you might want... Too bad, pretty. Would have been a pretty mess you made. Yeah? Hold that thought. This mess is just getting started. <laughs> you talk big. You want to talk big to my boys? I'll just watch. And just like clockwork, Crestal. Who's Crestal? Why does she exist? Why does she have black eyes? What? is the purpose of her. And not only that, who were those hearty people in that one cutscene? What were they doing to the fat guy? Seriously, what were they doing to the fucking fat guy? I don't even know. I don't know who these people are. I don't know their purpose. The last time we played this game, the main fucking problem back then were mutants and Nazis. And so far, all I'm seeing is Vampires and bugs. I mean, there was a semblance of Nazism because of the dad, but that was it. So the whole Nazi thing is absent now. And not only that, but the mutant thing is absent too. What happened to all the mutants? Are they all dead? I don't know. Like, I'm pretty sure they're still in that spawn bear in Louisiana and shit. Who fucking knows at this point? But yeah, like, who the fuck are these people? Seriously, like, what? Why? Why are there so many characters and so much plot that is just not being fucking mentioned? And the game is just fucking make it like we're just supposed to accept and know this shit. Like, it's just normal. No. It's not. It's really not. These are new fucking characters. I would love to know them more, please. What else you got? Why don't you come down here and try some yourself? Want to, but too much else to do. At least, you know, Rain's you know fucking attitude and voice acting is much better now. Nothing doing, Severin. I can take them all. I've never seen Dampier like this. I want She's... to add her to my collection. She still has moments of, you know, sounding kind of deadpan. Because of course she does. But, you know, it's still better than Blood Rain 1. She still has a lot of emotion now than she did beforehand. You know, she's not just whisper anger and all that shit. Uh huh. Rain is not worth it. They're on my Oh my god. It. It's not worth it. Don't go forward even though the game's forcing you to. Still hiding behind your chumps? And I yeah, say? this shit. Very loyal, my so because of the way this works now, in order for me Keep to actually fight Kestrel, which I did die to her once, I'm just jump cutting away from that. 
we have to essentially get rid of her goons first. Like so. And then use the Blood Rage. Which is the only way we're going to be doing this fight if we don't want to get fucked. Now, the problem is that while greatly this is working out in our favor, it's random on how long this will actually last. Sometimes it'll last a very good time. Sometimes the fight will go real quickly from this bar because the hit detection from the enemies is random. Oops, that for me. Gotta go now, pretty. Don't we deal with you then, okay? Get back here, you coward. I'm not finished with you yet. Let it go, Rain. Those oh my god. Running the show. Then you're bound to see them again. We've got a situation on the streets. Police have arrived and they're getting massacred. Goons are shutting down operations here and moving out. Yeah, Rain. Stop trying to fight the main villain. Stop trying to be a hero. We got situations going on that I'm not going to do anything about, but I'm going to fucking call you to get the job done yourself. Seriously, what is the point of this guy? I mean, originally he was espionage, right? And I, I understood that. And now he's like an informant, which should have been Darkman. Is he Darkman? I don't think he's Darkman. It doesn't sound anything like Darkman did. But maybe they changed voice actors. Who knows? Who knows who Darkman is? And who knows who the fuck this guy is? We'll never know, probably. All I do know, though, is apparently not only will the manual probably give me some lore, which, by the way, considering how long this part's gonna be, I'm not gonna show that. I'll probably do that as an, uh, an afterthought sort of thing. It's our own video at this point. Because every video is gonna be almost an hour long, at best. So, you know. Get down there before they disappear. <sighs> but yeah, uh, not only is there probably lore in the manual, like the first game, that will explain things, but apparently there was also a comic book, which explained a lot about Blood Rain 1 and apparently 2 as well, and is also semi-canon in that it has actual lore and then it has bullshit. Um... I'm, I'm, I looked into it, and the migraine got worse. I understand if you're a fan of Blood Rain. I understand why you would like these games. I like this death right here. I like a lot of what this game is offering. At the same time, I hate a lot of what this game is offering. I really fucking hate. And... Ooh, the lore, man. The lore is the worst part overall. The story is the worst part overall about this game. There's shit that's not unexplained. There's shit that is only in, like, external material. And what is in the fucking game is explained, like, in the canon material that we're actually going through, is very low and very confusing. Ultimately... Both this and the last game are a colossal mess in terms of story. But at least the Blood Rain 1 eventually had started slowly making more sense. And, you know, I was starting to understand things a lot more as it went on. You know, without having to go into the manual and shit, I could understand it at least. I'm hoping that Blood Rain 2 does the same thing. Where I start to understand things more and more after that first fucking clusterfuck, okay? You missed this one. But still, there was so much. So much being thrown at me that is completely new and never explained in anything from Blood Rain 1, the manuals, the guide, the game itself, nothing explains so much about what we're seeing here, Blood Rain 2 so far. And I'm just supposed to accept that. And I'm not going to. It's honestly much more of a fucking whiplash than Blood Rain 1 was. And I don't like it. At all. <sighs> but you know what's worse? The difficulty. The difficulty spike is a lot more harder. Especially in Act 2.
Hmm, you again. Hello, pretty. You still beating on my boys? Again, a hard fight I don't mind. What I do mind is when the game doesn't give me much of an advantage for the hard fight. Because the gun, not that great. Her damage, fucking stupid. It's a, it's a difficulty for me to adjust. And what's worse is how much of the bar I can use. Now, Blood Rain 1, from the very beginning, we had some fairly easy bosses, but they were done that way in order to be fair. Because we were starting out the game, and we were trying to get used to how it would work. You know, we still didn't have a lot of the useful shit that we needed. And for the most part, we were just starting to grow. Blood Rain 2 is throwing really hard boss at us from the get-go. And even with my Blood Rage, Did you even see that coming? I don't have a long enough Blood Rage in order to be useful. And not only that, I have to keep turning it off and focusing on henchmen because the Blood Rage loses more because of henchmen compared to just fighting the boss normally. And because of that, it makes this much more hard than it should be. So in a way, the Blood Rage meter is also a downgrade. I mean, it doesn't go down consecutively, but it goes down because of random enemies getting in the fucking way. And that's gonna happen often. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of that either. Severin. Okay, I get it. The bad guys rounding up street people like sheep, led by these Kestrel Dampier. You got anything on file? Mm, yeah. Kestrel on old school string from Eastern Asia. Looks like birds figure heavily into their ancestral line. Listen, I'm up at the old Union station off the road. Looks like they're corralling all the civilians. So that was that boss. Pain in the ass, but we made it through after three attempts. And let's go do it for this part, because we're now in Act 3. Yeah, that was a really short act. The shortest act of the entirety of these two games. And by the way, there's a move list. And it's like a fucking Tekken game with this shit. Jesus Christ. Anyway, next time in Blood Rain 2, we'll continue on to Act 3. And we're going to see if the game will improve from here. Because Jesus Christ, has this been a fucking ride for only the first two acts of the game. The beginning of the whole fucking thing. <sighs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.